The biggest threat to national security is the president himself, Mr. Adam Abar. During the presidential election 2021, he used tribal politics to divide our people. Only, this is the president who stood during the mayoral elections and told his supporters, you have the power, go and fight. The same president came again in a rally at Karawan and spoke about the NARS and said UDP is a NAR party and spoke to the passing of party leader and saying he has lost network. Just last week, 150 youth lost their lives at sea. I did not hear a single comment from President Barak. This is an example that he cannot go for more than two terms. We should never allow it. It is unacceptable in the world, especially now in Africa. That's why we see all these coup d'etats. Adam Barrow should not destroy our country. So President Barrow, your advisors, your ministers today will be the ones who will be blaming you tomorrow. They'll be the ones who will be laughing at you tomorrow. We have seen it with the former president. We have seen it with neighboring presidents. So do not let that fate befall you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Members here are present with us. The media fraternity here invited. We really appreciated your coming. The National Executive Wing, the National Youth Wing of the United Democratic Party here seated, led by Honorable Haji Suwane and Honorable Bintesh Sengor, together with our mayor, the mayor for KMC. Lord Mayor Charlie Penchuda, the regional executive members here with us, the UDP National Student Wing here represented, the party militants or the gallant militants of United Democratic Party here with us. We really appreciate your coming and thanks everybody. The UDP Youth Wing has called on these people or has called on everybody for a press conference to condemn Adam Barrow's irresponsible and vile statement uttered on Saturday 27 July 2024 during the inauguration of the NPP's Regional Bureau in Prikama, West Coast Region. In a recent speech made by Adam Barrow in Prikama, West Coast Region, addressing NPP militants and the public at their regional bureau inauguration made a deeply troubling remark. Mr. Adam Barrow declared that, I could, I am taking an oath today. I will be president until Usain Odabo dies. I, President Barrow, will be president until he, that means Dabo, dies. Only then will I leave the presidency. That's the contract I've signed now, until my father, Dabo, dies. And it is announced that he has died, and then we buried him. That's when I can finally say that I will leave the presidency. This statement was so irresponsible of him as the state CEO. Today's press conference is organized to address the irresponsible clueless, disturbing statement uttered by Adam Abaro is so on, and we never thought of such in post James era. We believed after James era, the democracy we all wish for, and the strengthening of the policies that we believed in as Democratic Party members, this was not what we expect. But not only us as a party, but Gambians, and the world at large never expected such statement from a president to his opponent and not an enemy. 
speakers after speakers will address how Barrow violated the Constitution and will tax the National Assembly members to file an Im impeachment motion against Barrow because he is currently not fit, unworthy for, and do not deserve to occupy the highest position of the Gambia. That's an insult to our motherland that we believe, and this is our concern. The press conference will also send a strong befitting message to the IGP, that's it, Mukhtar Ture, and Minister of Justice, Daura Jallo, to uphold and enforce the law without fear or favor, ill will or affection, as they claim during their oath. Because IGP cannot continue arresting innocent citizens for just criticizing Adam Abaro, while Justice Minister come with bogus charges, also sending message to National Human Rights Commission, the religious leaders, the CSOs, the activists, and the diplomatic community that Barrow had uttered a genocide statement, meaning the security, the peace, and stability of this country is at stake. And anything that should happen, he should be held responsible for. For public clarity and setting the record straight, our guys who are the speakers for today's occasion, which is the press conference, will elaborate on such. To set the record straight, in 2017, Barrow said he sacrificed his son, Habib Barrow, for this country. Then three years later, he said, They used to go to the graveyard late in the evening or late night and exhume graveyards or exhume corpses by putting amulets in their mouths or under their head. And on the 27th July 2024, this statement he stated that he will not relinquish power until Usain Odabo, the party leader and secretary general of the main opposition party, and he attends the funeral and bury him to confirm his death. And he said he signed that contract. I would like to tell you that Barrow has definitely signed a contract. He has signed and is to, he has signed a contract that he's talking of. Whether it was a satanic contract, whether it was an inhuman contract, or it's an assassin, it's an assassination contract. He knows it better. And I would like to emphasize this in Chairman Yang's Davos statement or in Yang's Davos voice. Anything that should happen to our Baba, our party leader, and our Secretary General, and the People's Party, and the People's President during, the, during his tenure, Adam Abaro is held accountable for. And in that, I will remind Adam that in the faith I believe and practice, the, the scripture said in Surah 8, Al-Anfal, verse 30, in the middle of the verse said, Wayam kuruna, wayam kurullaha, wallahu khairul maqirin. Meaning, they were plotting, and Allah too was plotting, and Allah is the best of plotters. The conference will also address the pressing issues the country is faced with, and expected you, as the CEO of the Gambia, to concentrate in addressing such challenges, such challenges that the country is facing. We want you to concentrate your effort and energy on fighting against coups because it's claiming the lives of our young people. Youths embarking on this perilous journey to Europe and losing their lives and being stranded in the desert. Issues of our farmers, the salaries of our gallant civil servants, lives and livelihood of Gambians, the cost of living, the continuous killings, burglaries, shortage of water, electric, uh, er erratic supply of electricity, the rampant corruption in your government, youth unemployment, depreciation of our dollars over foreign currencies, 
how are you going to tackle this year's disaster at Mabaro in this country? These are the issues we expected you to address when you have the opportunity to address the public and not to go personal. You are the CEO of the Gambia. You are the president of the Gambia that everybody looks upon to you. But currently, the nation is not given the respect it deserves from the outside world. Not because we don't have the people, not because the people are not in the capacity to serve. It's because of your irresponsible statements and the manner you are governing this country. But we can tell you, even if Davo dies in your tenure, we have more than thousands of Davo in the United Democratic Party. We have more than hundreds of his likes who are more than Davo, who can deliver far more than Davo. Davo is the party leader, the secretary general, doesn't mean he is there only to be for United Democratic Party. I can tell you we have the life of our Lord Mayor Talib Ben Suda here with us. We have the life of Rahim Malik Lowe. We have the likes of Yanks Dabo, Landing, you name them, Alaji S. Dabo, you name them, Haji Suanes, Binta Senghor, Mariama Sibos, and all others, Fadera Ismaila. We have a lot of them who can act exactly like Usenu, and in fact more than Usenu. But he's just putting you on the straightforward, talking about that land that you grabbed. And today you made mention that let the Justice Ministry come up with that documentation so that you can return the paper. We are telling you that the Justice Ministry, IOA, they will not come up with that letter. We want you to declare it yourself that you are forfeiting the land. Thereby, I am stopping here and I'm going to call on the first speaker to come and address this press conference who is no one but Ismaila Fadera who is speaking on behalf of the student wing of the United Democratic Party. Thank you very much. Ismaila, you're welcome. Good um, Thank you very much. Mr. Moderator, Honorable Kante, it is indeed sad and unfortunate to stand on this very podium to deliver a statement on behalf of the UDP students. On Saturday night, I find it extremely difficult to at least find a comfort in sleeping because of a troubling remarks made by someone who is supposed to be the father of the nation, who is not the president and the president. Without miss wasting much time, I go straight into the statement by the students' wing. The UDP students' wing is deeply disheartened and appealed by the recent vulgar and disrespectful remarks made by the president, Adam Abaro, against our esteemed leader, who is no other person than Bausi Rudabu. President Barrow's declaration to remain in power until the death of Mr. Dabo, claiming to have signed a contract to that effect, is not only a fragrant display of arrogance, but also a severe affront to the principles of democracy and respect that our nation holds dear. This statement is a stark reminder of the dangerous path our leadership is trading. To boast about staying in power until the demise of a political opponent is not just unethical, it undermines the very fabric of our democratic society. It is unbecoming of any leader, especially the president, to engage in such disgraceful rhetoric. The presidency is an office that should embody the highest standard of respect, integrity, and responsibility. Instead, President Burroughs' words have sown seeds of division and disrespect. As students and future leaders of the Gambia, we must unequivocally condemn such behavior 
our nation, the Gambia, deserves better. We deserve leaders who uphold the values of humility, respect, and dignity. We must remind President Barrow that power is not eternal. And ultimately, it is the people who decide the faith of their leaders. The future of the Gambia lies in the hands of its people. And we must strive to create a society where our leaders inspire hope and unity, not fear and division. We call upon all Gambians, regardless of their political affiliation, to stand with us in condemning these vile remarks. Let us work together to build a nation where respect and decency are at the forefront of the political discourse. Today, this early morning, to our greatest dismay, the information minister, who happened to be the mouthpiece of the government of the Gambia, in his interview with um, QTV, we will touch on that aspect because it was not a surprise to me. It is deeply concerning to witness someone who holds a PhD, someone who is contributing towards shaping of the future leaders of this country, someone who is a political lecturer. It is disheartening to witness Dr. Sise, our information minister, dismiss every vulgar utterance of the president as mere political remarks. This defense not only undermines the severity of the president's inappropriate language, but also reflects the troubling inconsistency in our leadership. It is the same Dr. Sise who once criticized President Barrow, calling him clueless, provoc provoking such agitation in Barrow that he reacted irrationally, referring to Dr. Sise dismissively. To brush off the president's insult as political remarks is tactically endorsed a dangerous precedent. When the highest office in the land is allowed to operate chaotically with impunity, it sets a precedent for all to follow. Dr. Sisa's defense of the precedents only makes the work of the Inspector General of Police more challenging. While the IGP, in his own words, strives to maintain civil discourse and order. His efforts are thwarted by a president whose behavior is anything but civil. The IGP strong appeal for respectful communication are rendered ineffective in the face of such a poor example from our leader. Leadership begins at at the top, a chaotic and foolish president leads to a chaotic and foolish nation. I repeat, leadership begins at the top, a chaotic and foolish president leads to a chaotic and foolish nation. When our leaders fail to uphold the standard of respect and dignity, it becomes impossible to expect the same from the citizenry. For the good of our nation, the Gambia, we must hold them accountable and insist on leadership that is both respectful or that is both respectable and respectful. Only then we can hope to create a society where decency and integrity prevail. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the wisdom and strength to uphold these values. And may his infinite blessings be upon Ba Usenu Dabo and all who work tirelessly for the betterment of our beloved country, the Gambia. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, the President of the UDP Student Wing, Mr. Fadera. Your statements were very clear and straight on point. And we really appreciated that stand of the Student Wing. Uh, we'll go straight to the next speaker. Sorry for that, the President is so emotional. And we know very well, not only him, but a lot of us are emotional based on the statement or that if you thought about it, you really get emotional. But we're very sorry for that. Please relax. We'll call on the female wing president, that's the youth wing of the United Democratic Party, Honorable Binta Senghor, to come on the podium and give her take on the aspect of the female wing of the United Democratic Party. You're welcome to the podium, Madam Senghor. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Esteemed guests, our audience here present today, I wouldn't say it is indeed sad, because this is more than sadness, sister. Today we are here to honor the oath we have taken to rescue this country from the incumbent, that is Barros government. And we came with the power, we came with respect, but we came with gasta gasta. You do me, I do you. <laughs> Members of the youth wing, our Honorable Lord Mayor of KMC, our elders here present today, women, and all of you that are gathered here today, we say Aslamu Alaikum to you all. Today, as I stand before you, to address a matter of paramount importance that affects the very fabric of our society, the issue of hate speech. In recent time, we, ha we have witnessed a disconcerting trend in the rhetoric surrounding of our political discourse, one that has to come to the forefront in the world and action of our own president, Adam Abad. What I mean is, he should be in front of advocating for hate speech. But he himself is now being the one to start hate speech in this country and misinformation. Hate speech in any form is a cross-thief force that threatens to erode the foundation of democracy, compassion and unity. It sown seeds of division and discord among our communities, leading to an environment of fear and mistrust. As the youth wing of the United Democratic Party, we advocate for a society built on inclusivity, inclusivity and respect. We must equally condemn any hate speech that seeks for demonic and dehumanizing and differentiate any individual or any political party or anyone that is called a citizen or non-citizen in this country. The recent president, President Barrow, has, as the leader of our nation, has a profound responsibility to model the values we hold dear values to justice, equality, and respect for all. The words of our leader carry weight. They have the power to uplift, inspire, and unify, or conversely, to incite anger, fear, and hate. It is crucial that we hold our leader accountable for their words. And this is why today we gather here to account President Barrow for his own statement to come out and apologize to the Gambian people for the statement he uttered against our hero, that is His Excellency, President Usainu Barrow. And it is on us 
the citizen to demand a higher standard of how the president should rule and how we want our country to be governed by him. While we cherish the rights of freedom and speech, we must also recognize that with these rights comes with these rights comes with a responsibility to speak with core and consideration. We cannot turn a blind eye to hate speech. We must be vigilant against any form of speech that will bring us division along our ethnic, religious, and ideological line. Our, di our diversion, our diversion is our strength, and it is the duty of it is our duty to celebrate it, not to weaponize it. As the President of the Republic of the Gambia, he, do, he used the freedom of speech that is given by the Constitution to every right in every democratic state to weaponize it as a political tool against our political party. Today I call upon the President to reflect on the power of his words and to choose a path to dialogue, our, to dialogue over decisions. And we want to remind the President, like months ago, he called for a political dialogue where all political parties and their leaders were present at the State House to discuss the present issues and to discuss issues that are bring, bringing disability, that are bringing discomfort and chaotic to our society. Let us foster a climate where every difference or every different able person of, will not succeed or will bring conflict, but rather opportunities of understanding and growth. Let us build a nation where every individual, regardless of their background, feel unsafe, will be valued in our society. I would like to call on all the CSOs and all the religious leaders that we hold responsible, that are serving, that are serving the people, that are the citizens, to come on board and to ask the president to apologize to Mr. Dabo and also to Gambians for uttering these irresponsible words towards our party leader, Usain Dabo. The international community, we want to take this opportunity to call all every international and diplomatic missions member to ask President Barrow to resign. And also, we are calling on members of the National Assembly to move a motion of impeachment, as we are all aware today. The president has violated many rights of the constitution of this Gambia, of the Gambia. And now we can move a motion to impeach President Barrow. He's inciting conflict among the young people, among the citizens, among the elderly people. In 2018, President Barrow made a statement against the United Democratic Party. And recently, in Barra, he made a statement against the United Democratic Party members, while the UDP National and Campaign Organizing Committee embarked on a nationwide tour. We want to call the IGP and the Justice Minister to listen to the people of this country. Listen to the Gambians. We are now tired. Our rights have been taken by Adam Obaro. We cannot speak anymore. We cannot eat anymore. We cannot sleep anymore. If you can arrest me for saying something or criticizing Barrow, I think and I believe you all can arrest Barrow or you all can go to Barrow and release a statement to condemn Barrow's speech and to ask him to come to the Gambian people and apologize. <laughs> we go by the living condition of Gambians. Every citizen of this country is crying. Bag of rice is expensive. We want the president to address these issues, not to go to a gathering to be in certain conflict or hatred among each other. Yes, I cried on that day. I laughed first and I cried. You know why? I feel pity for Gambians. I feel sorry for us. I see people clap when Barrow finished talking. They are ignorant people. They are not illiterate, they are ignorant. They are unlettered people, they didn't go to school. The living condition of Gambians led to so many youth taking the Bagway journey. We have lost thousands of young people across the European Sea. We have lost dozens of youth currently because of they are now using kus. Three days ago in Brikama, 
15 young boys died of consuming cruise. That was so pity. These are pressing issues that the president, we think and we believe he should address, but not to come on board, to be criticizing or to be throwing, to, throwing stones at a political party. Much more of Usainu Dabo. Usainu Dabo didn't owe any Gambians. We the Gambians owe Usainu Dabo. If Baro, you cannot give him that due respect. We give him that due respect. This is why, as the youth of United Democratic Party, today we will send a message to you. Now Dabo is above Baro. Dabo is above Baro. Wherever you go internationally, people talk about Baro. How he's ruling this country. How he is manipulating this country. How, is manip how he is manipulating our form and mistrust. Dishonesty. Let's go. I want to ask President Baro a question. Who did Baro sign this contract with? Who did Baro sign this contract with? And I want tomorrow, on Tuesday, on the 30th of July, Baro to answer me. Who did you sign this contract with? We want to know. We definitely want to know. If you call, you, if you call yourself a leader, we to call ourselves a leader. And we demand an answer from you. We want to know. And we are telling ECOWAS, Commonwealth, UN, UNICEF, UNDP, all these international communities that anything from here against 2026 before Barrow leave office, anything that happens to Mr. Dabo, even a scratch, Barrow is responsible. And we will sue him to anyway. Civil service, the civil servant, are crying all over the country. Low salary increase. He promised to increase their salaries. These are issues that Barrow should address. These are issues that everyone is crying of. These are issues we expect his ministry, the communication unit, the information unit to come out and tell the Gambian people this and this is what the government is doing to increase your salaries. But instead, instead, we are very, very disappointed. I personally, I am disappointed with Dr. Ismaila Caesar. I am from Brikama. He's from Brikama. He's a, do he's a son of Brikama. For the statement he ought to say, why will Barrow apologize? Barrow should apologize. You know it yourself, but because you are insecure of your position. If you go against Barrow today, he will sack you tomorrow. I quote in Mandinka. This is what will happen to all of you. If you don't believe in the Almighty, what He caters for you, you will get it. If you don't believe in that, you will forever be running as a servant. And now we are calling President Barrow to come face the United Democratic Party Youth Wing to give us a statement that includes an answer we are asking for. We are not here to joke. Like I said, now is gasta gasta. We are taking enough from him. If our youth are dying, what stop Barrow to come and address that? What stop Barrow to ask his government to put all stops on drugs? People are using pistol, a grade two student has taken a pistol to, his, to her school and shot someone. A grade two student. If that could happen to this country, who here is sleeping in peacefully? Semesters are coming to this country every day. Yesterday, one was attacked. One was attacked and almost been killed. Do we think, if we, this country, we are not secure, do we think Gambians that are in the diaspora, will they come to this country? No, they would not. We want you to come out and address this issue. And now we want to put a stop to this, and we demand an apology. 
if Baro didn't give an apology before the end of Friday, we will come out on, uh, on the street to demonstrate. We will go out to fight for this country. We are ready as young people of this country, not only UDP, but young people of this country. And we believe all political parties in this country will join us to end this injustice that is happening to the United Democratic Party. We have seen many statements issued by some political parties. And we hope to see the same statement being issued by the CSOs. If we call ourselves champions of advocates, let's do the advocacy in the right way. The Human Rights Commission, I believe I would have read their statement today on newspaper. Today I was in the office reading all newspapers. Unfortunately, I didn't see any statement that is released by them. And we hope to see that before on Wednesday. I therefore thank everyone here present today to attend and to listen to our call as we give our statement to Barrow and his government. I thank you all. Thank you very much, uh, President Winter Sengor, for the United Democratic Female Youth Wing. Uh, those messages were powerful, straight shoot. But also, on your statement, we will remind Dr. Ismail Asise, who is Ismail Asise, that in 2018 he made mention of Clueless Barrow. We want to tell him it's the same Clueless Barrow in 2018. Who was good, but turned to be worse in 2024. But Baro, again, we will tell you, is the same Dokita you were calling in 2018, who is now your information minister, who is not setting the record straight for you. In our present, we would like to recognize the presence of Dr. Lamin Mane, who is a senior party member. We understood he is here in our midst. Also, Honorable Bakarinjai here in our midst. We really recognize your presence and highly salute you. Next on the item, we'll call on our gallant leader, someone that we looked upon to, a mentor to so many young people, not only to the United Democratic Party, but to the nation at large, a charismatic leader, a leader who measure and people measure his statement and his doing and he's on tack and straightforward. That's no other person than the Lord Mayor, Honorable Talib Ahmed Ben Suda, who is here to face the media and cabinet. Thank you, you're welcome, Mayor. Well, uh, Slaw Alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Good afternoon to you all. Uh, first of all, I'd like to commend uh, the youth wing under the leadership of his Excellency Haji Touri, uh, Haji Sawane, uh, for organizing this press conference alongside Binzi Sengor. Uh, I would have liked to come here under the invitation under better circumstances. However, I have come here to speak in a very, very dark time in the history of the Gambia. That is after the comments, the insidious comments of President Adam Abaro on the passing of His Excellency Hussein Unumukunda Dabo. May Allah give him a very long life. May Allah make him witness the Gambia he has fought and sacrificed for, for all these years. And inshallah, Allah will do just that. First of all, I would like to say the biggest threat to national security is the president himself, Mr. Adam Abarak. Yes. This is not the first, it's not the second, it's not the third, and I'm sure this is not the last time he will make such comments that will cause disharmony and disunity between our very own people. When the national uh, dialogue was formed, I advised the party not to attend 
I myself have not partaken in any of the exercises. The reason being, I have come to know the passing of Adam Abaro. He is a leader who swore to protect Gambians, to unite Gambians, to preserve peace and stability. But since he became president, we have seen him do the opposite over and over and over again. During the presidential election 2021, he used tribal politics to divide our people. Not thinking for once what will happen when those people go back into their neighborhoods. Our country is a mixed country. People live in intermarriages. Tribes live side by side in harmony for many generations, even before 1965. So to divide the people amongst heritage is one of the most irresponsible things a leader can do. Because if there's the stability, the same leader will have to preserve the peace. Secondly, this is the president who stood during the mayoral elections and told his supporters, you have the power, go and fight. They beat up many of our supporters. MLC, who was handcuffed in Majum Estate, and electrocuted over and over again. Tear gas was thrown into one of our campaign cars. Many of our supporters were beaten and arrested. Some even handed to the police, and the police put them in cells. The same president came again in a rally at Karawan and spoke about the NARS and said UDP is a NAR party and spoke to the passing of party leader and saying he has lost network. Terrible comments you can say to somebody who was a former vice president and foreign affairs minister of our country. I will ask and beg of something from our party leader. Please never respond. Never respond to President Baro. You have your youths. You have your students. We will fight for you from now on. You have fought enough. I think many of the speakers have spoken of many of the problems. Just down the street here in Kololi, every week they will seize tons of cocaine. Every week we have murders. Every five o'clock in the morning, when you're going for Fajar players, you pass here, you will see lots of unemployed girls doing prostitution. Our youths are tired, they have lost hope. They are even running away, risking all their lives to get to Europe. Many die along the way. Many are captured and enslaved in Arab countries. Just last week, 150 youth lost their lives at sea. I did not hear a single comment from President Barak. Now we have a drug that is destroying our community, a drug that is taken from the human bone. They exhume graves, take out bones of human beings and make this drug. Today, one in five youth in the Gambia are smoking this drug. It is killing many on a week-on-week -week basis. Many of these youths are turning into violent criminals. We have never had a word from President Barra. Today, many of our people cannot get driver's license. There's no cash power meter, no identity cards. Gambia is a failed state. Not a word from President Adam Abaro. And when President Baro has the platform in Birkama to address some of these issues, to allay the anxiety of the people and the youth, he chooses to talk about the death of Hussein Odab. This is the most strange and dark thing I have ever had in Gambia. Even in the darkest days, when people were disappeared, nobody ever had people talking like this in political platforms. So for me, this is not politics. It's not a joke. This is about our country and our former vice president. I will not even refer to him as a party leader, because if we do, they will say it's UDP. This is a former vice president. And even in our culture, even if Hussein Odabo was never a vice president, nor a minister, he's an elder person. In our culture, you respect your elders. 
He can be grandfather to some, great grandfather to some, and can even be a father to the president. To talk ill of him time and time again, to insult him, ridicule him, belittle him. I think it is time for people to come together and tell Adam Abaro it is enough. And I said this two months ago or three months ago, every president has their time. Even a student leader has a time. When that time comes, you have to leave. And that's why I said two terms is even too much for President Barrow. This is an example that he cannot go for more than two terms. We should never allow it. It is unacceptable in the world, especially now in Africa. That's why we see all these good haters. Adam Abaro should not destroy our country. He continues to destroy this small country, the smallest country on mainland Africa. We demand that he comes out, withdraws his statement, apologizes to the passing of Hussein Udabo, apologizes to his family. His family has been traumatized enough. They have tried to kill him many times. They have jailed him. He has seen death in the eye. But if it's not Allah's time, you will not leave this earth. When President Barrow, you cannot cause the death of Hussein Udawa. I ask of all Gambians to come together, to put aside tribal politics, disunity, divisions. We see Makisal in Senegal. He said there will not be any elections. They burned the streets, the buildings for many months. He disunited the people. Where is Makisal today? They will destroy the country and then go to exile. And then we have to pick up the pieces. And I think for President Barrow, he must learn from his friend Makisal. Today, even on the radio, his ministers, his advisors, who were pushing him, arrest Usman Sonko, kill this person, kill that person. The same ministers today are blaming Makisal to what happened in Senegal. So President Barrow, your advisors, your ministers today, will be the ones who will be blaming you tomorrow. They'll be the ones who will be laughing at you tomorrow. We have seen it with the former president. We have seen it with neighboring presidents. So do not let that fate befall you. Without further ado, I want all of us to continue to pray for our party leader. We all know he will live a very long life to see the country he has sacrificed so much for. Thank you, Wassalam. This most important occasion. I'm deeply um, shocked, but nonetheless, not surprised by the president's um, unpatriotic, irresponsible, undemocratic, and unconstitutional rhetoric he delivered while opening his bureau in Birikama, West Coast region, on the 27th of July, 2024. When I had the remark, I asked myself so many questions. And the answers, some of them I have myself, but some will be left to the public to be the judge of yourself. When I heard he spoke of a death of an opponent, the first that comes to my mind, it is that um, one of a famous speaker, I mean a famous and a popular speaker from Zimbabwe, when he always said that corruption is a vile disease. I definitely concluded that indeed corruption is not only a vile disease, but corruption is the mother, the father of all dictators this world has get back to. We ask ourselves now, when a sitting president is calling an opposition leader, why that opposition leader did not do only thing but duties based upon him or her to hold a sitting government accountable for transparent and accountable running of his government. While we expect an answer from the president, the sitting president, the public did not hear anything. I have to kill Usain Odawa. I have to see Usain Odawa being killed 
I have to observe the burial of Usain Adabu to confirm his death before I relinquish power. Is this not a threat to national security? If not, I ask my question. What is more than a threat to national security than this? Fellow Gambians, residents of Gambia, this question is addressed to all of you to give Gambian people, that is including yourself, the answer towards 2026. I went through, I went through to the audio, which is almost 30 minutes or more. I listened to it keenly, if not more than 10 times. But I did not hear a single message a sitting president have addressed that is to a national interest, or one could say is a national interest agenda the president has delivered. And I will remind you, political gatherings are an opportunity accorded to politicians to emphasize or to repeat, or if not, to give citizens the new ideas and policies, programs they have for Gambian people, if they are in government or if they are already serving as leaders in the helm of affairs. Speakers has alluded to so many challenges the country is facing. That includes recently the capsize of a boat that has already consumed more than 150 people. How many families are affected in that? Almost an entire family was parents in the waters of Virginia. Where are they from? From where the president came from? That is, you are an open party. Why did those family parents? Why did they choose to perish in the waters than to remain comfortable in their house alive? Just to enjoy what so everything one could enjoy when you are alive. The answer is, if you have seen somebody running away from his house, throwing himself or herself in the waters, you should know there's nothing chasing him but fire outbreak. That means that the Gambia currently, nothing is killing our youth, but the hardship can be interpreted as a fire outbreak that is trying to throw every Gambian in the Mediterranean Sea, which has been now a graveyard to our youth. If President Barrow can spoke for almost 30 minutes without even showing solidarity, sympathy to those desperate youths who choose to die in the waters than to live in the Gambia under his leadership. This is concern as a youth leader. This is a nightmare as a politician. This is unfortunate as a citizen. That is why we are not just doing this press conference merely for talking, but we are giving President Barrow messages. When I heard these remarks, the first thing I do, I have to send a message to H.E., His Excellency, A.N.M. Usain Udawo, not to utter a single word in response to President Barrow's irresponsible and whatsoever brain drain he has, not for him to respond to these kind of messages. But I also assure myself, without putting him to him, that we will take responsibility of whatsoever will happen, but this country must be liberated. This country must get its independent. Not independent because of just politics, but independent economically. We don't want to see anymore. The youth of this country taking the irregular migration way, that is the famous pathway, to die in the waters because of why the government cannot create any meaningful employment to those youth. You will not see it anymore here. And we will stand and demand, as the speakers alluded to, the death contract that President Barrow has said he signed to see the death of Usain Dabo and to confirm while gracing his burial that Usain Dabo has died for him to be able to relinquish his power. We will want to see that death contract. And it is not merely we want to see, but we will fight to see that death contract. Because why? He spoke with certainty. He spoke with confidence. He spoke with a belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to kill Usain Dabo before him. And I tell him he is lying. He has no contract with us. He did not see any contract. He has never seen Allah's wisdom. He has never seen Allah's message directly. The answer is, President Barrow has a contract to assassinate a citizen. 
a citizen that is always standing to hold a government accountable before President Barros born and then birth in this country. 1996 was the year the United Democratic Party was formed. We all knew. For a head of state to stand in front of the public and lie to us, saying that whatever he did, what he did in this party, nobody has done it. Was he the founder of this party? I said, no, it's a lie. He did not found the United Democratic Party. UDP was found by decent Gambians. UDP was found by intellectuals, patriots, who love their country. They came together in an environment. While President Barrow, if you told him to come out that day, he is going to not only to faint, but he could even die. Because we saw the deputy that was arrested. President Barrow see himself under a table. If that man could tell me that he did something for this party which nobody could did, I have no answer. I have no other response but to call him a liar. I have no other, I have no other respect that I can give to a head of state who is that and entrusted to uphold the principle of democracy, to guide a constitution, a constitution that said that right to life is a fundamental human right. For you to come out and publicly order the killing of an opponent, I can call you that an unfortunate liar this country has ever get passed. And my message to the IGP, I met them just last two weeks. We have a discussion. They were talking about immoralities. They were talking about uncultural utterances in our political discourse. The answer I gave him, you have a daunting task. Because you have a president whom you must dance to his tunes, who cannot control himself when delivering public speeches. If you want to control moralities in this country, if you want to discipline people in this country, you have to get prepared because the first person to discipline, to discipline or to guide, or to term is President Anoba. But he vindicated me, thank God. He went to become. He did not deliver anything to national interest. Look at the insecurity internally that we face as a country. If you talk about ordinary citizens, People could say that you can, police will tell you that you cannot protect them because they are killed at their homes. They are killed at their financial bureaus. They are killed on the streets where the police are not. But I'm referencing three innocent, hardworking, patriotic political officers were killed by an armed gun officer who no one knows of today who the killer is. I repeat, who no one knows of today who the killer is. So if you talk about internal, internal security, and prior to that killing, President Barrow stood in an opening of a police station built by German government. He said, the security is, is con of this country is today guaranteed than anybody, any day else. He in fact said that it is the critics that are over-exaggerating these issues. But his government have done enough to secure each and every Gambia. The next week, he was told that, Mr. President, you got a mistake. This country is insecure. In fact, we are telling you you're going to kill your police officers. And they killed them. How are those families going through today? What's supposed to be done as far as our government is concerned? These are the questions we should have asked ourselves. But if President Barrow or Mr. Adama Barrow could only stand and sign a death contract to kill Mr. Usain Dabo before he relinquished power, I am calling on IEC. I am calling on IEC. Because when people tend to interpret things, they don't go critically. I go critically. I know why Aramaro is saying that. I know why he stood and promised and took out that he will never get or step down as a president. Because he said, he did not say that I'm not, I'm, I'm, I will continue to contest. He said, I will not relinquish power. What is the contract signed with IEC? We want to know. What is the self perpetuating contract signed with the IEC? We want to know. We already knew what transpired in 2021. But at the time, a lot of things were have been said. And as our party leader first spoke before us, we couldn't do anything but to comply to his appeal. That he did not even want a chicken, I mean a chicken, to die because of Hussein Nabo's presidency. It was emotional. But a voter population of over 200,000 votes who voted for Hussein Nabo, they all comply with discipline, with respect to Hichi Hussein Dabo. I am telling Hussein Dabo, 
move out from our properties. I have taken this press conference, never consulted him. And I will do my things, I will never consult him. Consult him. I am elected duly by the use of this, this party. And they have trust. I have a social contract with them. They have to see a government that is responsible. They have to see a government that is going to protect their faults. They have to see a government that is going to, a party that is going to defend what they have decided for. And I'm ready. And I'm ready. If I say I hear, I mean we are ready as youths. Nobody will take the back seat. We will die, but we will see the vote of the United Democratic Party members being protected. The votes of Gambian people who does not believe in the Aramara's government will be protected. We will die for this country. If Solo Sunday could die, why not myself and others? If Solo Sunday could sacrifice his life, why not me? So we cannot continue to, to be lambasted in an environment that we believe we don't deserve because of a mayor president who doesn't have a, even have a clue about what he has to do. He talked about the plot that Usain Dabo asked him to surrender because it was legally acquired. And I can tell you, Usain Dabo came with facts because he quoted the constitution. Section 168 tells us that the president cannot directly or indirectly enrich himself on the detriment of the people. If he does, it has attracted nothing but an impeachment. That is why I've been the same one. Alluded to the National Assembly. If they are responsible enough and they believe in Section 75 of the Constitution, they will definitely pass an impeachable, impeachable motion to impeach or to start the process of impeaching the president. Even though we do we don't have the numbers. But trust, records, and integrity, ethics and principles matters. Apart from that, the majority of the parliament decides. But what is on us? It is to do the needful. If a president can close his eyes. While declaring his assets in 2021, he said very clear, we saw in the documents, he has nine properties in his name. You got an electoral act, section 5. It tells you if anybody has more than one plot, the states cannot give you a plot to leave. But President Barrow did not only stop at nine plots. He said his bank account has more than 200 million, 200 million Gambian dollars. Yet still, the same president is wanting to steal, is wanting to butcher from the scar resources of this poor nation. Why could you ask yourself, why do I vote? Why do you vote? What should we expect? Is it this? The answer is no. This is the president who stood here not long ago. He increased taxes. Today, a bottle of water that was 25 because of a so-called tax stamp has created nothing but a bottle of water to exceed to 30 dollars or even 35. You call this a country? And that is why when Mayo said it's a failed state. Don't think it's a political statement. It's already a failed state when Gambians don't want to stand and liberate their country from criminals like Aramabaro. This is a country where national audit reports Proof of each and every life or soul in this country that the president's office, state house, has consumed more than 669 Gambian dollars. When Marriage had stood to hold him accountable, he said, Madi is an inciter of violence. Who is an inciter of violence? When I say corruption, it's a vile disease. Corruption is a threat to national security. This is where it is. National audit report. Submitted their report. The president only stated that that report is a mere opinion and it is biased. An institution that has been sponsored by citizens, taxpayers money, to give us a clue, a direction on how our resources are managed by the state. If a president could stand and call that institution, describe it as a mere opinion, biasness in it, where do you think you are going? Fellow youth, the fear of Usino Dabo, it is not his age. The fear for Usino Dabo, I can tell you, Barrows for Tomarabos. Barrow spoke to Marabus. They told him that if you don't kill Usain Dabo before 2026, he's going to end your government. And if he ends your government, he's going to prosecute you. You are going to my truth. And that's why. That is why I am telling Arabo, if Usain Dabo dies, if Usain Dabo dies from here to 2026, we are going to hold you accountable. And it's better. You dig your own graveyard, you bury yourself before Usain Dabo dies. I thank you all for giving me so much.
Thank you very much, Hechi Hajiswane, the president of the United Democratic Party's youth wing. Just three statements will add on top of that. That if Solo Sandan can sacrifice for us to enjoy the change that we are enjoying and believed in 2016, why not us, the youths who are today living and we are here? If the, youth of the K, if the youth of Kenya can do it and change the current status of Kenya and make so they stamp to end so the tax bill or what, so the financial bill that was to be introduced at the parliament was rejected or doesn't in fact.